Of all the creatures in Chinese mythology, why is the dragon the most important? How many variations of Chinese dragons are there, and which is the most powerful? And are the claims that dragons once existed true? In this video, we'll answer all these questions and more. Welcome to the Mysteries of Mythology, Chinese Dragons. In the West, we often see dragons as monsters, fire-breathing creatures that attack villages, eat maidens, and are often the rite of passage for many heroes. But unlike their Western counterparts, Chinese dragons are revered as benevolent creatures. Though these flying giants can instill fear and awe, they can also be defenders and wise teachers to the people they interact with. The Chinese dragon, or Long, as it's natively called, has a very long history. As early as 8000 BCE, cave carvings in the Shangxi province depict the serpentine creature, and a jade dragon found in the Hanan province dates back to around 7000 years ago. Wang Fu, a famous historian and thinker from China's Eastern Han Dynasty, gave us a detailed description of the dragon. He said that dragons took elements of many different animals. Their heads are shaped like a camel's, their ears are as big as a bull's, and their eyes could either look gentle like a rabbit's or fierce like a demon's. They had deer-like antlers, their bodies twisted and turned like a snake's, and their bellies were tough like a clam shell. They had the powerful feet of a tiger and the sharp claws of an eagle. And all over their bodies, they're covered with shiny scales, just like a carp. In fact, it was said that dragons had 117 of these scales, which in traditional Chinese philosophy and religion identifies a perfect balance of yin, negative essence, and yang, positive essence. Each element of the dragon's appearance has a symbolic meaning. The horns represent authority and strength. The scales signify protection and the claws creative power. Even the way it moves, so fluid and graceful, speaks of the dragon's mastery over the natural world. But what are the myths of ancient Chinese dragons? Our journey into the world of Chinese dragons takes us to the heart of timeless legends and tales that have captivated generations and illuminated the cultural landscape of China. One of the most inspiring tales is that of the Dragon Gate. In the flowing waters of the Yellow River, a carp named Liu was about to embark on an extraordinary journey. From the moment Liu was born, deep in the river's embrace, there was an innate yearning, a call to something greater. Among thousands of his kin, Liu was not just another fish in the river. He harbored a dream, a vision that set him apart. Each year as spring warmed the waters, a whisper traveled through the river, the legend of the Dragon Gate. Perched atop a towering waterfall, this mystical gate was said to hold the power to transform any carp that could leap over its crest into a magnificent dragon. Liu, with his shimmering scales and swift movements, felt a pull towards this legend. He swam tirelessly battling the relentless currents of the mighty Yellow River. The journey to the Dragon Gate was fraught with dangers beyond the fierce flow. Predators lurked in the depths, their eyes gleaming with hunger, and fishermen cast their nets hoping to snare the unwary. Despite these dangers, Liu pressed on. As he swam, Liu grew in strength, both in body and mind. Finally, after countless moons and endless struggles, Liu reached the base of the legendary waterfall. Here, the water roared with fearsome power, and the mist from the falls shrouded everything in a ghostly veil. The Dragon Gate loomed above, seemingly insurmountable, its height a challenge to the bravest of hearts. Liu didn't falter. With a burst of strength, he surged upwards, leaping with all his might towards the Dragon Gate. The world seemed to stand still as he soared through the air. 
his body glistening in the sunlight. And then, as he passed through the gate, a miraculous transformation began. In the place of the carp, a magnificent dragon emerged, its scales shimmering with the hues of the rainbow. Liu, now a dragon, soared into the sky, his roar echoing across the land. He had overcome the impossible, a testament to the power of perseverance and courage. There are many more legends about dragons in Chinese mythology, such as the four dragon kings, dragon brothers, each ruling over one of the four seas, the east, south, west, and north. These dragons were responsible for controlling rain and water and are revered in a culture that deeply values agriculture and water resources. They were often depicted as benevolent figures but could become wrathful if disrespected, leading to floods or droughts. Or the story of Nur, the Sky Mender. In a time of chaos where the sky was fractured, Nua, a goddess and descendant of dragons, gathered pieces of the fallen jade sky and began to repair them piece by piece. Unable to reach some of the parts of the sky, she summoned a dragon. The heat of the dragon's back kept her warm in the cold of the heavens, and its body helped her to reach the corners of the sky. With the sky repaired, the dragon withdrew deep into the earth, and the people enjoyed the peace that followed. Dragons in Chinese mythology are not only powerful and mystical creatures, but also deeply entwined with the lineage of emperors, symbolizing their divine authority. The connection between dragons and imperial rule was especially prominent from the Han to the Qing dynasties. Emperors were seen as chosen by divine forces, often depicted as descendants of dragons themselves. The Yellow Emperor, also known as Huangdi, a legendary figure in Chinese history, is a prime example of this belief. He was considered the offspring of a human mother and a divine dragon, intertwining human and celestial realms. According to legends, the Yellow Emperor was conceived by his mother Fu Bao after she saw a yellow ray of light from the Big Dipper constellation. This divine heritage was reflected in every aspect of an emperor's life, from their majestic robes adorned with dragon imagery to the decor of their royal chambers. The dragon, particularly in yellow or golden hues, became a symbol of supreme imperial power. By the 14th century, the five-clawed dragon emerged as an exclusive emblem of the emperor, embodying control over the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. This symbol of ultimate authority was so revered that it led to a prohibition. No one outside the imperial circle was allowed to wear garments featuring the five-clawed dragon. In ancient Chinese cosmology, there are four kinds of dragons. Each type, unique in appearance and symbolism, offers a deeper understanding of the dragon's role in Chinese mythology and culture. The celestial dragon, Tianlong. This dragon is said to guard the heavenly abodes and ensure the gods have everything they need. It represents the highest form of dragon, symbolizing divine power and celestial authority. The spiritual dragon Shenlong, a divine guardian of the natural world. This dragon controls the wind, clouds and rain, playing a crucial role in Chinese agriculture. It's a symbol of harmony and balance in nature, revered for its power over the elements. Then there's the dragon of hidden treasures, Fuzanglong. This type guards buried treasures, both literal riches and hidden wisdom. This dragon represents the unknown, the undiscovered, and the unattainable, evoking a sense of mystery and allure. The underworld or earth dragon, Dilong, is a contrast to its celestial counterpart. This dragon presides over the rivers and streams, symbolizing mastery over water and the underworld. It's seen as a guardian of wealth and natural resources. As time passed, the number grew to nine dragons, which is an auspicious number in Chinese numerology, which interestingly is the same number of animals the dragon is comprised of. 
The additional dragons were the winged dragon, Ying Long, known for its role as a powerful and swift messenger. Often depicted with wings, unlike other types, it represents speed, freedom, and transcendence. The horned dragon, Qulong, is considered the mightiest and most powerful. Associated with strength and protection, it's often invoked as a symbol of justice and a guardian of warriors. The coiling dragon, Panlong, found in lakes and rivers, symbolizes wisdom and flexibility. This type embodies adaptability and change, reflecting the fluid nature of water. The yellow dragon, Huanglong, is an imperial guardian. It symbolizes prosperity, wealth, and abundance, often associated with the emperor and the center of the universe. Lastly, the atmospheric dragon, Tenglong, masters weather and storms. This dragon's role is to balance the climate, ensuring harmony between the heavens and the earth. Each of these nine dragon types carries its own unique story and cultural significance. From the heavens to the earth, from the hidden depths of the sea to the vastness of the sky, these dragons embody the diverse facets of the natural world and human aspiration. Their stories continue to fascinate and inspire, offering a window into a world where the mythical and the real merge in spectacular fashion. People claiming to have seen dragons or have evidence of their existence is nothing new. As early as the Jin Dynasty around 300 BCE, scholars and historians wrote detailed documents about dragon bones found in excavations across the Sichuan province. This area is now known to contain fossils from the Middle and Late Jurassic period, so a creature such as the sauropede with a large neck could easily be interpreted as a dragon. But it's important to remember that texts were written almost 6,000 years after the earliest recorded reference to dragons. Another plausible explanation was connected to the Chinese dragon often being associated with wind and water. The origins of dragons have been associated with the early sightings of whales. Watching these giants breaching the water could be seen as the magical ability to fly and seeing them purge water from blowholes could have been considered the formation of clouds and storms. Other arguments are that dragons were simply political creations by imperial storytellers to enforce the emperor's divine right to rule. Others believe that dragons do exist and can be hidden in other planes of existence or transformed to look like humans. It is this ability to evade that only allows them to be seen by a select few. Today, in the realm of Chinese dragons, we witness these mythical creatures leap from legend into vibrant cultural traditions and modern media. One of the most visually stunning manifestations of the dragon's enduring presence is the dragon dance. A highlight of the Chinese New Year celebrations, the Dragon Dance is a mesmerizing spectacle of color and energy. This dance is more than a performance. It's a ritual to summon luck and prosperity, embodying the dragon's role as a benevolent bringer of good fortune. But the dragon's influence extends beyond festivities. In the agricultural heartlands of China, dragons were revered as deities of water and weather, crucial for agriculture. Farmers prayed to dragon gods for rain and a bountiful harvest, embodying the dragon's deep connection with the cycles of nature and the well-being of the community. Another significant cultural event is the Dragon Boat Festival, celebrated on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. This festival commemorates the ancient poet Ku Yuan, with dragon boats racing through the waters to the beat of drums. In modern media, we see a large range of Chinese-style dragons from Disney's Mulan to an endless list of game characters. From the dawn of our earliest history to the modern day, Chinese dragons have endured in our mythology. Whether or not you believe in dragons, their influence globally is as real as the room you are in. 
Do you have a favorite dragon, or is there more you can add to their story? Let us know in the comments. Continue your adventure to master the mythologies in the next videos.